Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week I'm going to show you a little tool kit, like a little tool bag that I always have packed up and set up as a go-to. So if there's any type of repair, say electrical or plumbing or even like automotive repairs, I can just grab this thing and I've got a decent sort assortment of tools to get me started in a repair and often I can complete full-on repairs with this little tool bag. But first, let's get to some viewer knives. The first knife we'll take a look at was sent to me from uh, Survival Dawn. Now, Survival Dawn is a 12-year-old knife maker from New Hampshire, and he's actually got a YouTube channel. It's just Survival Dawn, and I actually watched his video where he kind of shows the review of this knife he made. Really cool. Tons of, of these viewer knives we get are from really young people, and it's just absolutely inspiring to myself, to, to all the viewers. Like, great job, guys. It, let no one ever doubt or, or say anything bad about your age. And then, especially the fact that you, you're making YouTube videos on it, and it's just awesome. This is like the next generation of makers and creators and, and YouTube content creators sharing information. And it's just like the cycle that just keeps going, and I think it's fantastic. So, this knife was sent to us, and a really cool looking fixed blade knife. Don, very good job there. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this was your first knife or not. I forget but you said that in the email, but either way, really great job. Fantastic, keep making knives, keep making videos. That's awesome. Next, we're gonna take a look at a couple projects sent to me from James, and James is from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Now, the first picture we're gonna take a look at is not a knife, but it's a really cool tool that he forged from a ball peen hammer. A type of tomahawk with a pick on the end of it. Now, this one is a decorative piece that he had made for a friend, but uh, this came from a ball peen hammer, and he forged this thing, and just absolutely fantastic. Look at the beautiful finish, that mirror polish on this thing. I would say this is a very well executed tool, so very nicely done on this, James. And the second is a knife that he made from a railroad spike, and again, just fantastic uh, attention to detail, the quality and the time that he's put into finishing this blade. What a great looking knife. James, excellent work. Thank you for sharing this with us. And lastly, we're going to take a look at a friction folder made by a 14 year old Oliver from Denmark. Uh, a really cool looking knife here. I really like the work he's done to it. And friction folders are a lot more work than a fixed blade knife. Obviously, there's a moving part, and to get it right, uh, he said in his email there's a few things in the next one he'd like to change. But again, that's a process of making stuff. You're always changing, you're always getting better and learning on an existing or a current project uh, things that you can do better in future projects. And for 14 years old making knives like this, what an incredible future and bright, bright potential represented in knives like this. So Oliver, excellent job. Thanks to everyone who sent in knives to be featured on this channel. You can email me jeremy at homesteadknives.com if you'd like your knife featured. Let's get into today's Tool Time Tuesday. So today I'm just going to show you this tool pouch that I keep ready and packed up in this configuration at all times. Now this is by no means a comprehensive tool kit, but this is rather a, a minimalistic uh, bag of tools that I can always have ready and if there's something that needs immediate attention, I can just grab this and go. Whether it be you know plumbing issues or electrical issues, um, even minor automotive repairs, uh, things going wrong with my tractor or an electric fence. The idea behind this bag is something that's always packed up, always ready, and I can just grab it off the hook and take it with me and it'll at least get me started in the repair. Um, often I'll have to go back and get additional tools, more specialized tools, but very often I'm actually quite surprised at how well I can just finish the repair or whatever it is that needs fixing with this bag. So this is the bag right here and this is a Cooney's model. EL800. Now there's tons of different models of bags that you can have. Um, I really like this one. This one's fairly new. I haven't used it all that much, but it's really decent size to have some of the basic, the bare essentials to a broad variety of repairs that I encounter. Obviously everybody's situation is different. Um, even the fact, you know, some people live in uh, brick houses and some people live in wood houses. Um, that will obviously affect some of the tools you'd carry, but for the most part, for my needs, this serves me really, really well and I can make a lot of repairs, whether it's like fixing a sprinkler line out to a garden or fixing an electrical fence or some minor tweak that needs to happen to my tractor. I can usually accomplish most of those tasks with this bag. It's still small enough that it's not hard to carry around. I can toss it in my truck really quickly, go help a neighbor if I need to, and I also have a little bit of room here where I can add a few tools, and there are a couple tools that I'll always put in here if I know it's going to be a slightly larger job. So I'm going to reposition the camera, we're going to set up from an overhead, and we're just going to kind of break this little kit down just to give you some thoughts about things to think about. 
So before we get into all the contents of this bag, I'll just give you a quick background and a little bit of my previous work history. Now, by trade, I'm a journeyman millwright, and what that is is a it's basically a heavy-duty mechanic that works on stationary equipment. And when you go to do an apprenticeship as a millwright, you learn everything from machining to welding. You learn to work on engines, uh, gearboxes, transmissions, compressors, pumps. I mean, screw compressors, conveyors, um, basic pipe fitting. You learn all kinds of different things. And typically, when you're doing an apprenticeship, the company that you work for will be very specialized part of the broader millwright field. So the company that I did my apprenticeship with and that I worked for for years, uh, we manufactured and installed airport baggage conveyors. I did work all over the United States. I spent years down in Southern California, quite a bit of time in Texas, Colorado, Montana, New Mexico, um, you name it, Michigan. I mean, I've worked all over the place. And a lot of times we go in and do the installation and then we're gone, but quite often we get these maintenance contracts as well. And uh, for example, when we did the Burbank installation, I was actually the maintenance guy for a few months while we hired a local person to take over. But basically every once a week I would fly down to Burbank and I'd do my walkthroughs, my preventative maintenance checks, and then I'd be there for a day or so and then I'd fly back. And that happened every single week. Also, when we'd finished the big new terminal at the Edmonton International Airport, um, I was a maintenance guy and I'd go up there once a week, I'd do all my PM checks, again, check for like temperatures, voltages, um, you, know, you know, all the fluid levels in the gearboxes, belt tracking and stuff like that, and then I'd come back. Now, often when I went up to Edmonton, I would take my motorcycle, so all my tools had to fit in my backpack on my motorbike, and at the same time, I did need to be able to do the work and make any required repairs and adjustments. So, that experience has really been useful uh, to kind of really hone in my thinking about tools and you know what what are the least amount of tools I can use to get a certain job done having said that I have a lot of tools and I'm a tool fanatic and I, I keep buying tools it's not like I just find a couple of absolute necessities and that's it that's all by no means is that my stance on tools but when you're putting a kit like this together just a grab-and-go that's always ready uh, it's really useful if you can kind of really think about exactly how you use those things and how you need to use those things so let's take a look I'm gonna reposition the camera and we'll kind of break this little kit down all right, so here's the bag itself. And uh, as you can see, it's not too big. Um, this is a Cooney's model EL800. Uh, there's lots of high quality bags you can buy. I chose leather just because leather is so long lasting and th that's just my preference. It's, you know, you can find other synthetics that work just as well, but I don't know, I kind of like the old world part of leather. Um, so I guess real quickly, uh, this is like an electrician's type pouch, I guess you could call it. Uh, obviously got the little loops inside that you can put different tools in. Um, also these, these pouches have a little bit more room where you can have a few things that are free. And then there's a few little compartments on the outside. And then the one thing that I really like about this one, uh, a few features, um, is the little clip here uh, for clipping something like this crescent wrench. And then also I really like the pouch uh, that this has on here. I'll show you what I keep in there in just a second. And also this little loop, this is something you could always easily add uh, with just one of these like a little toggle or something almost for um, keeping electrical tape. So let's quickly uh, go through some of these tools and again depending on your situation uh, this bag is going to vary a lot for you but I'll kind of go through why I have it set up this way and what I use these tools for. Uh, I guess we'll just start on the outside. I already showed you the crescent wrench. Um, don't really need to say too much about that. Super handy tools to have. Obviously, if I'm doing a repair and I know, I know I'm going to be doing a lot of wrenching, I'm going to grab the proper wrenches. Uh, this is always my last option. Um, but, you know, in a pinch, it's always nice to have one of these. Sometimes just to hold something if you're tightening something else up. Um, definitely don't like to rely on crescent wrenches that much. But at the same time, really handy to have for a type of a, like a grab-and-go type tool bag. Next, on this toggle, I'll keep some electrical tape as well as Teflon tape. Obviously, ele electrical tape, there's tons of different uses for that. And then Teflon tape, just because a lot of the stuff I'll do has, uh, has to do with repairs out in the garden with our sprinklers and stuff like that. So, always nice to have this. Sometimes you just got to tweak something or, or replace something. Nice to have this ready all the time and part of my tool bag. This loop here, I'll keep a small ball peen hammer what is this a 16 ounce uh, big enough you can use it to adjust things but small enough if you have somewhat delicate work you can do it with this as well the head's a little loose on this one i should probably look at fixing that um, and i tip i prefer the ball peen hammer over a claw hammer just just because i guess my background um as a millwright mostly metal working and machining i always rely on ball peen hammers uh claw hammers 
certainly useful. Um, I guess the one advantage is that you can do different prying tasks with a claw hammer, but I don't know. For some reason, my preference in hammers is always a ball peen. Obviously, if I'm doing like woodworking carpentry, I've always got lots of claw hammers, framing hammers, and stuff like that. But as far as a maintenance bag, I'm going to prefer a ball peen, but that's just my personal choice. Olfa razor knife, super handy. Goes without saying, these things are awesome to have. Of course, I've always got some type of a pocket knife on me, but for a lot of work, uh, you know, even like cutting electrical cables or something like that, really handy to have a super sharp razor blade. And I like Olfa, they're pretty much the best. And then again, this kind of set up primarily as an electrical slash plumbing kit, because that's the most of the repairs I find myself doing. Uh, I have a set of Klein wire strippers here. And then I've got just a pair of regular pliers. Anytime you need to grab something, get in there, yank something, adjust something, twist something, handy to have. And then decent side cutters. Now I've gone with a larger set. These are fuller. I have a set of clients that are like this too. But sometimes I'm fixing stuff like with barbed wire and stuff like that. So it's nice to have a little bit more of a robust set. And again, for finer electrical tweaks and stuff, I can use these as well. And then in this far pouch thing here, ugh, I've got just a little light. Uh, this one's magnetic. You can stick it. It's magnetic on the bottom or the top. These are really common. These are not very fancy, very inexpensive. I think this was like three bucks or something. And then a little clip. Just handy sometimes to set it on wherever you're working. If you're working underneath something, you know, your vehicle or something like that. Really nice to have a little flashlight that's a little work light uh, that's also magnetic. So this end's magnetic. So is this clip. And again, the clip, you could always just click it on your shirt when you're working in front of you. And uh, these things take uh, AA batteries, which is really handy because it's really easy just to pop new batteries in when these ones die. And then uh, we'll go into the outside pouch right here. Now, one tool that I use all the time is this little, this is a fluke, a little voltage uh, detector. Now, I don't carry a voltmeter with me because most often if I'm troubleshooting some, say like some water isn't working, I don't really care about what type of voltage I have. I just wanna see if I have the voltage and I can trace it back. Is it the breaker, is it a fuse? Um, so this is really handy. Uh, this one also has an integrated LED light. Uh, but really, once you bring it close to power, uh, this little light lights up and you can get most of them look more like a sharpie or some type of a marker But just I'll show you so this extension cord here is live when I bring it close It lights up and turns red when it's really strong and then blue when it's kind of a weak signal So if I go here. I know that there's power in this cord really handy if you're about to make an adjustment to something You don't know if you've killed the power for sure at the breaker box This is really handy and I use this tool all the time again This has a little clip right here So you can clip it to the brim of your hat or wherever and you can shine this light where you're working I actually bought this one in Las Vegas when I was working at the airport there And then I keep a few of these wire nuts or in Canada we call morettes um, Rett's the brand, I guess, but uh, for electrical fences mostly. Sometimes you get the, the wires, your electrical fence is gone or something like that. You can just splice them with this, wrap them with electrical tape. Um, definitely not the best way to do proper connections for, for 110 volt wiring and stuff like that, but it's always handy to have a couple of these in your pouch. And sometimes I'll switch different things like different uh, hose clamps and, and stuff like that in here. Uh, but I really like this toolkit because of this little pouch that I have on it. Getting into the middle here, I've got a set of tin snips. Um, these I don't use all that much, but there's times when they're just so handy to have. A lot of times if you're buying something and you're taking it apart or, or setting it up like a barbecue or something even, it's got heavy banding on it. It's nice just to be able to cut this real quick. I usually don't do a lot of tin cutting with this, but even in a the pinch, these ones actually work like scissors as well. So rather than carrying a set of scissors or shears, I just keep a set of these, and these are Wiss, I believe, is a brand. No, never mind, these are Craftsman. Uh, but they're really good, handy to have all kinds of different things, even like pruning and stuff like that. I just, I like having a set of these on me in my bag. Um, a level, just a small, you call this like electrician's level. Uh, obviously, even simple stuff, like if you're hanging up a picture, it's nice to have one in your bag. So, you know, we buy a new mirror or a picture to hang up. I can just bring this inside and, you know, I've got most of the tools covered to do that work. Um, for screwdriver, I used to be against these multi-screwdrivers, but after doing so much maintenance work and realizing that, you know, you know, even beyond this, like for a lot of the maintenance stuff, there's certain size Torx bits that I would have to have and some other specialized uh, metric bits and stuff like that, nut drivers. I realized that if I could pare down the essentials, it really is gonna save me a lot of room. I really like this Milwaukee. This is called the 11-in-1. 
And it's got your different tips. It's got a few different stages here. So these are your Robertson or square drive. I think the Americans would call them. And then inside here, essentially this is a nut driver. Not exactly sure what that size is. And this also acts as a nut driver. And then you've got your Phillips and slots, small ones on this, this end here. And that goes into there. And then on this side here, we've got a larger Phillips and slot. And again, a different size nut driver. So where they get the 11 from is actually this little hole right there, and I actually use this quite a bit, when you're putting in new electrical services, uh, you can put your wire in there and just kink it over for wrapping it around your little terminal screws. So that actually works really good. And then also it has right here a wire slitter, and that actually works fairly well. You can, if you've got to strip the wire to put in, you know, you're putting in 110 volt receptacles or something. When I was running wire out in the shop here, I use this tool all the time, and you can actually just set your wire in there and give it a pull. It works better with solid wire rather than stranded. But uh, kind of handy little tool. That's why they call it the 11 in one because of these and then every other function combined. So this really saves a lot of space and I've got the, all the basics covered as far as a screwdriver goes. Uh, don't get me wrong though, I've got like two full sets of snap-on screwdrivers and if I'm doing stuff in the shop here, I'll always reach for those rather than this. But as far as my actual tool bag, this is really handy to have. Uh, something that a lot of people don't consider uh, as a mobile thing is uh, an inspection mirror. But I love this thing, especially if I'm doing work on a vehicle. Uh, sometimes you just, you know, you need to replace a fan belt and you just can't see the numbers or something like that. It's nice to be able to wiggle this in there. All kinds of stuff. Even if you're just like adjusting a weird plumbing fitting underneath a sink or something, it's so handy. Once you learn to work with inspection mirrors like this, uh, it can really, really make uh, awkward tasks a lot quicker and more efficient. And even stuff like the other day I was checking what type of oil filter I needed for my tractor. It's really nice just to stick this in there and be able to figure it out rather than have to undo it or you know kind of go to the other side, crawl underneath and look up and under. Uh, really handy to have and I actually like carrying these in my little mobile toolkit. And then a super tiny little uh, screwdriver. Uh, this is more for uh, small electronics, tiny repairs. If you know something happens in the house or something like that, I can just fix it with this. Uh, and this is double-ended, so you've got your slot on this side and then a little Phillips. These are cheap. You can get these all over the place. They're handy. I, I find I keep one of these on me and I actually find I use it a lot. And I've got a Sharpie pen. And again, in this main compartment, I don't like to stuff it because I like to be able to get at any one tool without affecting the other tools. And then again, if I knew, if, if I know I've got a, a more intense repair and I need additional tools, I do have capacity to add to this kit. Uh, Sharpie, yeah, obviously just writing down stuff, marking wires, marking whatever, making notes. You could write things on your hands so you remember them. Then I keep a very small set of, uh, oh my goodness, why is that so tight? We'll go to this set here. These are the uh, Nipex. Uh, shoot, what do they call these things again? I just call them the Nipex, but these really are like better than a crescent wrench. Um, you see you've got the parallel jaws there and these self locks, when you go to tighten on it and you're tightening this way, these things will self lock so you actually don't need to hold them closed because just the way they're designed, once you put force on there, they kind of force themselves locked. So they're really handy because they won't strip out your fasteners and huge adjustability. And again, uh, this as opposed to a crescent wrench, with a crescent wrench, every time you come to, you know, you turn it, you have to pull it off of the faces and then put it back here and then turn again. Whereas this, if you set it right, it's always got enough room to open up and just keep swiveling around like that. So it's much quicker uh, than a crescent wrench. And just, I love these things. They're not cheap, uh, but these things are so worth it. I've got the full set of these and I've got a couple duplicates that I keep in other kits as well. Um, oh, just these things, I, I can't say enough good about them. These are fantastic tools. I keep a real small set of water pump pliers. I got a deal on a whole bunch of these once and I've probably got like five pairs this size. Yeah, they're handy. They're handy for little stuff. Even if you have to hold like, you know, a little nut somewhere. Um, you obviously can't put a lot of force on these and they, they kind of slide out when you're trying to tighten much. Uh, and then also, when are you actually really working with pipes this small? But just a set this size, I actually find quite useful. Um, Especially when we're working on like dirt bikes or like go-karts with the kids. A lot of times, you know, you got a little fuel line hose, you just need to wiggle off there. These are really handy for that. 
And then one tool that I've added recently that I really like is just a magnetic pickup tool that telescopes. Uh, this one's a power fist, so it's kind of junk, you can tell. But it's got the little LED light in there, and that's actually kind of handy. So, you know, so often you're doing a repair, you're doing something, and you just drop a screw down into a little cranny that you can't quite reach. Really nice just to have this to pick it up. So this is actually one thing that I've started recently carrying and I use it a lot, uh, cheap enough. I think this was like a couple bucks, so definitely worth having. Uh, I'm gonna put all this back in here and I'll show you a couple of few additions that I might add if I know I've got something a little bit more uh, involved to fix. Now the only other thing that I'll typically carry with me that I don't leave in here uh, is a larger set of these Nipex and a larger set of water pump pliers. If I know I've got like a large fitting out on a water or a sprinkler system that I need to adjust, I'll often uh, throw these in there just because they allow you to do much larger work. Even stuff like taking, like literally taking a ball hitch off of my tractor and putting a different size, I can actually do that work with this tool. So much smaller than carrying a crescent wrench of the same capacity. And like I say, with that ratcheting type action where you can just, you know, open it up and go to the next grab and these things are so awesome so a lot of times if I know I'm doing something big like putting in a new water line or something like that I will take these with me and uh, usually I'll actually just stuff these right in here with my hammer just like that so that is my basic go-to toolkit that I like to keep ready just for whatever comes up. You know, if I know I'm doing a major work, like an overhaul, like I'm fixing a lawnmower or something like that, obviously I'll kind of get a bit better set up, but this is just for those times when it's like, oh crap, something's leaking, there's, there's a hose leaking, or the electrical fence isn't working, or whatever, and it's just like, you know what, I need to grab there. If you just need to do a quick adjustment, uh, something on your vehicle, um, it's nice to have a kit of dedicated tools, and all these tools are entirely redundant to my tool box so nothing in this kit shortens uh, the availability of my tools that I have for in my shop and other work and I think that's really important because you know if you leave this say you go help a friend and you leave this in their house or or you leave this in your vehicle or in the basement or something like that it's nice not to have to be like oh shoot I need that I gotta go get it now so you know I remember when I was young seeing these guys with all these tools and I it's kind of disheartening because as a young person you're just starting to build your tool collection but my advice to young people is that keep building it keep buying tools uh, keep looking for sales for deals obviously once you've got a basic kit uh, you know think about some of these tools and would it be handy to have a second one of these just to leave in your vehicle and then you can can wait for a really good deal you can wait for like garage sales estate sales or when they go on super clearance prices like that and I'm at the point now in my life where I've got actually this entire bag this entire bag is tools that I don't use and I've got like at least three of the tools in there I've got like full wrench and ratchet sets in there they're craftsmen they're not cheap but I'm gonna get rid of them eventually because with the tools I have at my dad's shop with the tools I have in here in my truck I've got full tool kits just for fixing dirt bikes and everything I need there to do most anything on a dirt bike is in that kit but I also have all those same tools in another location. So once you set up a lot of tools, it's so handy to have dedicated toolkits and it just, it makes the task of fixing things so much more efficient and more enjoyable. And I don't know, it's, it's just one of these things that kind of comes from years and years of, of appreciating and using and building your tool collection. And like I said, my preference is the electrician style pouch rather than like a toolbox or a case. Just because of the fact that it's so easy and convenient, uh, it forces me to be very minimalistic and very focused on what I keep in here. And then I also, when I'm actually putting this together and putting my tools in, I, I try to be very careful that everything's gonna stay in place. Like if I just throw this on the seat of my truck and we drive down the road, I wanna make sure that nothing's gonna fall out and that I don't have to be picking up all these tools. You know, it can sit here for hours and everything's set up, well, except for the hammer, everything's set up in such a way that it's gonna stay, right? Even upside down a little bit, except for the hammer again. But that's really important too. I try and keep everything nice and tight. I don't want it overly crammed. I want some room to add things. Even sometimes if you have a part that you wanna put in here, it's nice to be able to put the part in here, climb up the ladder change it out and you're good to go and then typically the way I will carry this I don't ever wear this around my waist like I think they're designed to be worn but I always just use this as a shoulder strap so I'll grab it out of my truck if I'm walking wherever I'm walking to do the repair I'll put it on like this if it's a longer haul I can put it over my other shoulder and then uh, also if I'm say if I'm going up on a light or on a ladder or uh, one time I had to fix a windmill do some adjustments on a windmill 
I'll just throw this over my shoulders like this and I've got all my tools right in front of me ready to go but they don't interfere with my legs at all so you know those platforms on the top of windmills you have to go up I can kneel there I can crawl around there and this thing is never in the way of my movement but everything's still right here so that's just my preference that's why I love these electrical style pouches and this is how I carry it all right guys well that's it for tool time Tuesday just showing you a quick look at my go-to tool bag I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching guys Cheers. Mm -hmm.